Hi there, Ian Blair Hamilton again, and rather important uh, little issue today, which I think is actually going to affect the entire water ionizer industry. I had a talk with an old friend yesterday who is actually a manufacturer and delivers his uh, molecular hydrogen water systems into Japan. And he talked to me about a company that I'd talked to myself in my last uh, visit to Japan, Nihon Trim, who, he says, got into a little bit of strife. Uh, where we are with hydrogen at the moment is that everybody claims to be able to produce hydrogen because there are no tests, in the main there are no tests, we've tested it, uh, but there are very, very few tests, so you have to actually believe what people say. Uh, in Japan, they're very, very careful, probably much more careful than we are. And what happens in Japan if, is that if an industry group gets going and creates the guidelines for safety that the government thinks are, are correct, the, the government will enforce it. So in Japan, my friend tells me, there is a group called something like the Hydrogen Water Promotion Association, who determined that a, any sort of machine that produces molecular hydrogen in their water uh, is not deemed to be a viable machine unless it has 0.8 parts per million of hydrogen in the water. And that's the level at which the hydrogen will, they've determined, have sufficient effect. Well, if you're a water ionizer maker and you've been selling, you know, alkalinity for years and years and years, uh, what would you do when you realise that the machine that you sell also produces hydrogen? Well, you just go, boom, you're now an H2 maker, okay? Very simple, just change your marketing strategy, don't change it in the machine. However, there is another law in Japan that says if you're producing a water filter of any sort, there is an upper limit on the pH of the water and you must not exceed the pH of that water. Now, here's the problem. An electrolysis system, which is the same as the vast number of so-called water ionizers sold in the West, consists of a series of plates, like so. Water comes in here, goes down between the plates, and electricity goes through the plates. It causes an attraction and rejection between the plates. So then you get one stream going out, which they call alkaline, and one stream going out, which they call acid. Now, whether it really is alkaline is quite another question, and I've done a number of uh, videos on YouTube that you can have a look at about that question. Is it really alkaline or not? But it gives a pH. It might be 8.5, might be 9.5, might be 10.5. Okay? The, the company in question couldn't get the 0.8 parts per million of hydrogen, so they did what every electronic ionizer company does, they just up the voltage, right? They put more voltage in because they knew that if they put more voltage in, and it's not, it's not adding power supplies or anything like that, it's just pressing a button on the front for a higher setting. If you put more voltage in, you get higher pH. If you get higher pH, you should get higher parts per million. Okay, reasonable. The problem with that is, that a higher pH water, if it's too high, can have some quite drastic effects, diarrhea, etc., and is really not good for people. So and that's why the Japanese have come in and they've said, this pH is what you can have, otherwise you can't sell it. So, to get the eight parts per million, the company said, I just press a higher setting. All made sense, started selling, until they got a letter in the mail from the Japanese government suing them. So what's happened now is, I don't know the result of it, what I do know is that uh, if I was an electronic ionizer maker using electrolysis in Japan, I would be a very worried boy. Uh, I also am kind of you know, happy because our UltraStream doesn't use electrolysis and gets far more than that, the 8 ppm. And in fact, the only uh, test that you can see documented by an independent laboratory was where they took our UltraStream and they took a top selling SD501 uh, electronic ionizer and they tested the PPM of both of them. Ours got well above the 8, it got 1.1, this guy got 0.3. Okay, so 
at normal usage, know that, know that, that wouldn't have been any good in Japan. So there we go. Uh, things are getting a bit busy in the office now. Uh, so let's go. Have a think about it. I would be thinking very seriously if someone was asking me to spend five thousand, six thousand dollars, or even two or three thousand dollars on an electronic ionizer, because I think the time has come that their design has a problem that can't be gotten over just by adding more electricity.